Hey guys, how's it going? So today on Tacoma World, I was asked to explain uh, my PCV setup, and so here it is. Uh, this is your PCV. Essentially, this allows oil, blow-by gases, and crankcase pressure out and back into the intake to be recirculated for emissions purposes. Um, now, on a turbocharger application, you don't want that because this will see boost, and then since this is a one-way check valve, it'll close the PCV, and that won't allow crankcase pressure to come out, and that's, well, that's a bad thing, so you don't want that to happen. So what you do to fix that is you'll plug this or utilize it for something else and then run it to a catch can. Now, the way I have this is like a, uh, one guy on there was calling it independent. I think this is what he was talking about. Basically, it comes out of the valve cover, the blow by gases and oil. It goes up this line into this catch can. There's a mesh in there right there where that ring is. The oil and stuff settles at the bottom. There's a plug here to drain it. And then all the gases and stuff just vent back out through this filter, back to atmosphere. Now, if you live in California, you'll probably get in trouble for doing this because emissions and all that stuff and Hillary Clinton and advoca avocados and stuff like that, yeah. So. If you're environmentally friendly, you probably don't want to do this. Now, there's another way to do this that's more efficient. What you do is you take what would usually be a filter and you route it back into the inlet of your turbo so that way all the gases go back into your turbo and you can pass emissions and be all friendly and all that junk. So, we obviously, we're not concerned with that. Uh, this is one of the ways to do it. Again, there's another way, and that's to go into the inlet of the turbo, which is not what I'm doing because I'm lazy and, yeah. Okay, guys, so... What I want to explain here is uh, the fresh air intake for the crankcase. Um, essentially what you want to do is have a check valve on this system so that way it can only suck in air and not blow back air back out because if it does that then you're going to have oil all over your engine bay. Uh, you want all your oil and contaminants that are in your crankcase to go into your catch can and then be vented to atmosphere or into your turbo inlet so that way you can minimize uh, I guess oil seepage and oil spillage. Uh, because if you don't, then you're just going to have oil spread across your engine bay, and that's no fun. So what you have here is you have a filter, a check valve, and it's all connected to the stock intake system for the crankcase. What this allows to happen is air to go into the crankcase, but not to come back out of the crankcase through this uh, line here. It will, however, come back out through the PCV system into the catch can and then out to atmosphere. Um, you want this to happen so that way all your oil gets caught in the catch can and not right here across your firewall. So that's what that check valve is for. It won't allow anything back out, but it'll allow stuff back in. Um, and that's essentially how you wanna run your PCV and your uh, fresh air intake for your crankcase. So another thing that I wanted to explain is uh, your fuel pressure regulator. Now, this needs to see boost. If it doesn't see boost, then it won't increase your uh, injector, I guess, uh, pressure, your gasoline pressure to your injectors, and then you won't get more fuel for the amount of boost that you're putting in there. You'll lean it out and you'll crack a piston ring and break something. So what you need to do is you need to boost reference your fuel pressure regulator. Uh, a lot of guys will go from this nipple here, which is your fuel pressure regulator, to this one here, which sees vacuum. And that's a mistake. You don't want this to see vacuum. It'll cause a lean condition at idle and uh, your engine won't run properly. Now what you want to do is allow this to see atmospheric and boost only. So you route it to your charge pipe. Now this charge pipe right here at idle has no boost running to it. So whenever you start making boost, in my case this would be at 2100 RPM or so, uh, this boost will then go into here and into your fuel pressure regulator and it'll start regulating the fuel pressure based on boost pressure. So let's say you have 33 pounds of fuel pressure and one pound of boost. Well now you have 34 pounds of fuel pressure and it's compensating as much as it can with the ECU fuel pressure regulator and fuel pump to uh, keep you at a reasonable air fuel ratio so that way you don't lean out the engine. Now again the more you increase your boost uh, the more this will increase pressure. It can only handle, from what I've heard on Tacoma World, uh, about 400 horsepower. Past that, and it stops working. I don't know what that translates to in PSI, since uh, airflow doesn't affect the fuel pressure regulator as much as PSI does. And so I'd, I'd give it maybe 10 PSI, I guess. I, I don't really know um, how much it PSI can handle before it breaks or before it can't keep up anymore. I know your stock injectors are probably only good to 250 to 280 horsepower. Uh, past that, they're over their duty cycle and it's not the best thing to continue to run them that way because they'll fail. So 
uh, past 5 PSI or so, you really want to upgrade your injectors and at that point go ahead and go to a uh, piggyback to tune your setup because the stock system really can't handle too much over 4 PSI. Now, this big old turbo on this little bitty engine is really only making 4 PSI, which is well within what the stock system can handle. So for now, that's where I'm going to leave it. Eventually, I do want to get a uh, AEM uh, FIC6, so that way I can tune this whole thing and some bigger injectors, so that way I can hit like 10 PSI or so. My long-term goal for this little thing here is 300 to 350 horsepower. Um, guys have done way more than that and way less than that and have had success either way. So I'm going to stick somewhere in the middle with 300 and 350, somewhere around there. I have to make torque to be like 380, maybe 400. These things make a lot of torque for whatever reason. Not sure why. They make 220 from factory and 190 horsepower. And so going to 300 and maybe four something potentially torque is a big improvement and you can really tell. Um, I'd like to say on 4 PSI alone, I can already I can already feel it. This thing hits boost and the whole front end just kind of bucks up a little bit and it takes off. So that's it. That's how, uh, that's how your PCV, your fresh air intake for your crankcase and your fuel pressure regulator, uh, as far as I can tell, should be run. Now, don't hold me accountable for any mistakes you make on your, your vehicle, your build, your uh, setup, because if you break something, it's not my fault. I might not know what I'm talking about. So this is, as far as what I can tell, a good way to run things. Uh, your catch can can be vented to atmosphere or your inlet of your turbo. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Your fresh air intake for your uh, crankcase needs to have a check valve on it and a filter so that way it doesn't suck in crap. And your fuel pressure regulator needs to see boost but not vacuum. So that's basically an overview of what this video has been. Uh, I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, pre please leave me a like, a comment, and uh, subscribe. It really helps me out and I like seeing the comments uh, in particular. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, come check out my channel.